Hey everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Okay, so today I'm gonna be doing another spiral straight pour. Y'all know I'm obsessed with these, so that's what's happening again. Uh, this is one of my favorite color combos. I uh, have here Artist Loft Aqua Green. I have Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in 24 karat gold and copper. And I have a nice fresh jar of copper. So hopefully that's gonna give me some nice strong copper cells going on here. Uh, these paints have been mixed. One part paint to two parts Floetrol. That mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound, but it disappears quickly and it is making a nice thin stream off of my stick, nice even stream, like a pencil lead. Uh, you don't want it thick and thin and thick and thin. That means you need to do some more mixing. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brands, colors, consistency, the recipe, of course, the technique, uh, all of the things that I can't fit on a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom is the color palette that was used in that particular painting. And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those two colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also at amazon.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint in my pouring cup. I want to make sure that I have enough paint for my pour. I know that I do, but I have in the past messed up that ratio and did not have enough paint for my pour cup. So I just do that as a precaution now. So you will see that I have already covered my edges on my painting. Um, I mix four straight pours. I mix pretty thin. I know some people do a thicker mix. Some folks are kind of like at a three or three and a half. But to get the effects that I get when I do my straight pours, I go thin. I love Floetrol. Um, sometimes mix works really well, but Floetrol um, has a tendency to not stick to the sides that well when it is mixed thin like this. So I just try to make sure that my coverage is as good as it can be on the sides before I paint. It's easier to do it ahead of time than it is to try to fix it later. And then for the sides, because these sides are puckered, that's another reason that uh, I would do the sides first in this case um, with these round canvases. The sides are puckered and so you really have to kind of get in there with the paint or some of the canvas might still show.
And if you don't prime the sides, the paint might not flow off of the edge as evenly, which is kind of what I want in this particular case. So I just like to eliminate as many variables as possible troubleshooting ahead of time if you have not seen my video on troubleshooting uh it'll be one of the pop-up screens at the end of this video but uh if you are new to acrylic pouring you really want to watch that video it kind of covers all of the things that I, that I could possibly think of that can go wrong in a painting, why it's happening and how to prevent it. And judging by the comments, people seem to find it very helpful. Okay, let's put some paint in a cup. Always check your consistency before pouring into your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. All right, pouring from up high, I want it to sink and blend. And regarding the order of my color choices, uh, if you've watched me do these before, you know that I like to have the colors that have the most contrast going in first and last. So in this case, Um, as far as, you know, between the background and the cell makers, I want that copper in the center. And what happens is, for some reason, when I pour these, whatever the last color to go in the cup is, winds up at the very bottom. Just a bit of it, enough of it, to give me something really cool happening in the center. So the aqua green and the copper have the most contrast and that is why they are going in the cup in this order. And what's happening in the cup is already just making me so happy. Look at that, already. So now I'm going to take some of my leftover background color. So the background color is what goes in the cup. The base coat is what goes on the canvas. The background color is going to be the paint that does not sell. That's the distinction there. So It's the one that falls to the background and the cells come to the foreground. I'm going to pour quickly, spin slowly. I'm going to go clockwise and I'm going to do my darndest to stay in the center while I'm doing it. So I want to pour or spin slowly because I want this to have a spiral effect. If I spin too quickly, it's going to have more of, uh, it's gonna look more like a ring pour. As I get closer to the end of the cup, I will get closer to the canvas. That gives me more control. And I will wait for that copper to come out. I feel like I'm off center. Here comes the copper. And I like to do one and a half turns. When I get to this end part, because that is the Fibonacci 1.5, that's the ratio. 
So one and a half really gives you that Fibonacci spiral effect and whew, okay. All right, 10 on the dismount, looking gorgeous so far. All right, let's give this baby a torch. Barney two times, living up to his name. Okay, so popping these bubbles, this technique creates a lot of bubbles. When we pop the bubbles, what is happening is some of the bubbles are lying in the layers underneath what is on top. So say in this, in this area, there is paint in there, mixed in there, and there's bubbles, like layers of paint underneath that green, there's layers of copper, layers of gold, if there's a bubble in that copper, when it comes up, when the bubble comes up, it's going to bring some of that paint with it. Now, because these paints, the deco art paints are matte, they dry matte, they have a hydrophobic effect with the artist loft paint, which dries glossier. So what happens is when these cells pop up, they actually push the aqua paint away and create the cells. So as I let this sit, more of those bubbles are gonna start to come up a little bit and then I will pop them again and I will keep doing that and more cells will come up. These little cells here, they will grow. I need to refill my torch. I must refill. So as these cells pop up, they will get bigger they will grow, and then when I spin, one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> then when I spin, they will get even bigger. So I, when I do a straight pour, you can tilt it right away, and cells will still come up. They will be more of the pop-up cell type cell, or pearl cells, some people call them. Um, I call them the pop-up cells because that's what kind of pops up last in the painting. The bolder cells kind of happen ahead of time. They're the ones that happen before you stretch. And I got to tell you, this copper against this aqua is, oh, it's so pretty. So I can't wait to like show you guys at an angle so you can just, uh, this is a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm really happy with this one. Okay. So being patient here is your friend. It's your buddy. Patience is a virtue when you want boulder cells, when you want a successful straight pour, allowing these cells to develop, letting your paint puddle percolate. This is going to give you more cells. And there's some beautiful blending between the gold and the copper in here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I think I'm ready to give this a spin. Um, I think it's ready. You'll, you'll get to learn when is best. Sometimes it's better if it looks like it's really developing. Like sometimes you might want to even let it sit longer. Uh, 
but I like where this is. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to do it now. I hate to even spin it. It's just so pretty the way it is. And you don't have to spin fast. It will get there. If you've ever had a painting shift on you overnight, you know how much paint can move just because it's just slightly not level. If you're spinning it slowly, it's still gonna get there. There's no reason to fling it on your walls. You'll see, it, it barely even drips an inch away from my canvas when I do it. I'm in a rental, you know. I want my money back. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh, this is just. Ooh, this might be my new favorite. This is looking so gorgeous, these colors together. Oh my gosh. Man, this just made my day. I was having kind of an icky day. This painting just made my day. I'm glad that I made myself paint. This is, this is why we do this. It is so therapeutic. Ugh. I'm leaving this in because I feel like some, somebody out there is going to need to hear this. You don't feel like painting, just go paint. You'll feel better. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit. And there's going to be more of these pop-up cells coming up. You can see them in there. I'm not gonna torch it anymore because I don't want, I, I don't think I want this to fill up with those. I really kind of like having um, a nice chunk of that green in there. I think. <laughs> so one of the benefits of having, um, of using Floetrol is um, when it dries, you don't see the bubbles because Floetrol dries kind of matte. These aren't very, you know, um, impressive when they're dry, when they're varnished, you know, they come back to life, all the sparkle comes back. But because it's mixed so thin and because, you know, just the nature of Floetrol, if there are still bubbles in your paint, you won't see them. If I were to use a, uh, a pouring medium, you know, that is like artist grade, something glossy like Golden or Liquitex, um, you would see pits from the bubbles, but I don't get that from Floetrol, which is one of the reasons why I love it for the straight pours, because I may not want to torch it anymore. I don't want it to change more, so I want to leave it. This is just, I'm so happy with this right now. All right, so I'm going to get this off the spinner because the spinner's not level, and I'm going to let this sit. And I'll bring you in for a close-up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. It has been sitting for a while. You can see more of those pop-up cells came up. But I still have a decent amount of that green left to maintain that very glowy effect. It is hard to capture the bling of that copper against that green, but man, oh man, I'm really, really happy with this one. You can see a bit of that bling. That center is very cool, very 3D looking. See the pop-up cells. Very cool looking. Blending of that copper and gold. 
really happy with this one. It glows. That is what happens when you are mindful of the order your paints go in. That's how you get that glow. You gotta have that contrast. So if I was using a dark background, I would have the lightest color in the center as that spiral, and then the center would be glowing. But in this case, it looks like the background is glowing. But then you also get the glow of the bling from those metallic paints. Yeah. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. All of the affiliate links. Uh, so Deco Art, if you wanted to get your hands on these paints, you can order them right from the website. They usually have more in stock than the stores do. And uh, if you use that coupon code, you can get yourself a nice percentage off. And any of the affiliate links that you use, I receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. So that really helps me out. Also in the description box, you will find links to uh, my website, ginadeluca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. And you will also find the link to our Facebook group. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. You know how that goes. There's some cranky people on the interwebs. But, uh, yeah. That is it. Oh, I'm just so happy with this one. All right, y'all, I hope y'all have a beautiful day. And oh, be sure to uh, stay tuned. I have some announcements coming up this week. I'm gonna do a video with several announcements all at once. Uh, so that's coming very soon. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.